Today, we're looking at Open Interpreter. Open Interpreter is an open source version of the original ChatGPT Code Interpreter. Code Interpreter was released in July to all paying users. And Code Interpreter was really exciting because it gave ChatGPT the opportunity to execute code. Now we have an open source version. We're gonna see how it stacks up against um, the original Code Interpreter. We'll go through all of the capabilities. And there's one capability it has that the original does not. So we'll go over that as well. Real quick, before we look at Code Interpreter, let's look at the original. So it's since been changed to the name Advanced Data Analysis. Um, Code Interpreter must have scared people off uh, being more technical or something, but it doesn't matter, all the same. Um, so real quick, let's look at how it handles cropping an image. Um, so we're gonna have it change this image for us. Um, can you crop an image? So as mentioned earlier, what's really exciting about Code Interpreter is it lets ChatGPT run code. Um, it has like a Python sandbox, essentially, and I think it's uh, probably running in a cloud somewhere, um, like provisions a virtual machine or something. But um, okay, so we're gonna throw this image there, okay. Uh, crop this image for us. Um, we don't care how. Uh, just, just decide. I don't know, something like that. Um, so let's see how it does it. Okay, so it's working. So it's running Python code. Um, probably importing some library. I don't know if it shows us any of that. Oh, we can see the work. So here we see the work. It's using the pillow library, um, doing all kinds of code, uh, changing the size, uh, left right top, uh, changing it by some factor. And yeah, and then it has an image, so we can download the image here. Uh, so let's look at it, and here it is. Uh, yeah, so it looks different. So it cropped an image, it, it ran Python. Um, cool, that's a small example. Now let's look at Open Interpreter. Here's the original list of capabilities that Code Interpreter had. Data analysis, converting files, code development, solving math problems. And let's see how, how uh, Open Interpreter stacks up. There's one capability it has that the original does not, and I'm excited to show you that one. I'll include the repository in the description of this YouTube video so you can get the, to it quickly. Here we're looking at it. Um, you can note here we have an MIT license, so that means that it's available, uh, has permission for commercial use and uh, modification, so that's kind of exciting. You can fork it and build on top of Open Interpreter. So let's get into the code. So if we scroll down here to this part, we'll see pip install open interpreter is all we need to start running it. So let's go to terminal. Um, I'm gonna use a virtual environment uh, just so I don't have to install it globally on my computer. Um, I prefer virtual environments. So we're gonna use um, Python 3.10. Um, we're gonna do a virtual environment with Python 3.10. I, I think you need at least 3.10 to um, for, for open interpreter to work. So this is how I can create a virtual environment. If you don't uh, use them, go to ChatGPT. It'll show you how to uh, get virtual environment working on your computer. So here we go. So, okay, I'm gonna activate that with this command, bin activate, cool. So now we are, we have our virtual environment. We should be able to fire this statement. pip install open interpreter. Cool, so that's done. We're gonna wanna export our OpenAI key just so that it's available in our local, local terminal tab. So you can um, enter your key in here and run this and then we'll go to the next step. I'm gonna pause while I enter mine so you don't know it. All right, so let's see if interpreter works. Cool, so it worked, let's say hello. Okay, now we're gonna go on the next step. We're gonna see how its capabilities stack up to the original. For the first capability, we'll look at data analysis. We're gonna look at the CSV and how it analyzes it. Um, real quick, before we get started, I was, I'm gonna include a GitHub repo in the description with uh, this file as well as the other files we use. So um, look for it there if you want to grab this data to follow along. Let's see if Open Interpreter can count the amount of vegetables in this column here, this group. So that will basically be saying for all these common food names, how many of them are vegetables in the CSV. So let's just uh, check for ourselves what that number looks like. So I have a little uh, Excel function here. So count if, 
130. So 130 of these are vegetables. Okay, let's see how it does on that. I have my um, CSV in the same directory as where I'm running interpreter. That will be required so that I can see it. So I have a generic food.csv right here in this in this one. So let's go ahead and say to um, look at a CSV and count um, some stuff. Um, stuff. Uh, the CSV is called, so let's make sure we get the right name. Um, so I'm going to put in ticks here just to show uh, Open Interpreter that this is the file. Um, so what do we want to do? We want to count the amount of uh, veg. Um, yeah, we want to count the amount of vegetables. Vegetables. Um, so in the file. So let's see if that's enough. So it comes up with the plan. Okay, it's going to load the CSV. It's going to uh, read it and then count the vegetables. So that sounds good to me. So it's going to give us the code that it wants to use. So to run it, I just click uh, yes, uh, Y for yes. Cool, here it goes. Um, all right, uh, yeah, want some more code? I'm going to say yes. It's just trying to comprehend what it needs to do. Um, oh, it thinks the food name is it. Um, no, actually, the um, column is group. If I'm understanding correctly, that's where it's wrong. So, you know, it makes assumptions. That's fine. It needs to. Okay. Let's see how it responds to that. Okay, I guess I can't type like that. Okay, no, it gets it. Um, sure, we'll say yes. I think it might be, okay, it got it. All right, 130. So that was the number we were thinking. Um, I don't think it needed to look in the food name as it did. It said food name or in group, but that's okay. It did that. All right, next test. Let's see if it can do a visual visualization by group. Okay. So it's going to try to do a visualization by group. So let's see how it does on this. Okay, it wants to do uh, matplotlib. That makes sense. I'm going to say yes. Um, yes, you should install it. It's asking if it should install. Uh, yes, lots of questions for it. Okay, something failed. Okay, it's just, it's learning. It's it, it tried to do a different type of pip install. Okay, cool, here we go. Paused real quick while I was installing. It keeps going, so it looks like it has a plan to plot it. Let's say yes. Oh, okay, it's got something else to install. Trial and error, just like how all of us code. New plan, uh, yeah. But Seems fine. Okay, and it worked. Let's see what we got here. Um, yeah, so if you look, vegetables is about 130. So that looks right to me. Um, nice. Okay, we can check one thing off. Um, analysis and visualization, done successful. Okay, next up, let's see if it can change file types. We're going to change the name, uh, the file type of this file, 2 mountain dot, uh, dot jpeg. So let's change the file type of dash mountain. I think it was jpeg, right? Yep, jpeg to a png. Um, let's see how it does on that. Just going to check if it exists. That makes sense. Sure. Um, 
Yeah, let's do that. Okay. It's true that it exists. I'm going to use uh, the pillow library. That sounds fine. Let's see if that works. And I think it works. So let's see. Um, yeah, so we have a PNG under the same name. That seemed to work fine. Um, what do I want to do? Oh, it wants to remove the old original. No, let's keep it. Okay, so I think we are ready to try the next one. Let's see if it can edit an image um, like we saw with Code Interpreter. Let's uh, edit our new image. Um, that, uh, PNG. Um, how about we crop it. Um, I don't really care how though. Don't care how, just do it. Let's see. Sure, so it has a plan. It's gonna use that same library. It's gonna come up with some new uh, size. Sure, it wants to open it. Okay, I wanted to see the size of it. That's fine. Maybe it wants to use that for its, its, its changes it's gonna do. It's gonna get the width and the height. It's gonna change it by that factor of uh, divided by four essentially. Um, yeah, that sounds good. I think it might look like I already did it. Okay, so. Oh no, did it not? Oh, it hasn't saved it. Let's go ahead and see. It saved it. Okay, so let's see what we got. Um, yeah, that is uh, cropped. Smaller than the original. Success. Okay, so we can check off two more. Converting fire files and um, code development. So I guess I'm qualifying that um, it conferred the file name and then when it basically crop the image that was just like general code development. So cool. But now you could probably tell it the last check mark shouldn't be too hard, which is just general math. Let's see if you can do some general math. Uh, what's uh, X equals, let's say 10 to the third. Ten to the third X. Yes, that's good to go. A thousand. Okay, so that was easy. So let's uh, say let's check that one off. All right. So let's see. Here's the exciting part. What's the thing that it can do that ChatGPT Code Interpreter Original cannot? Let's ask ChatGPT to do something specifically. You know, advanced data analysis, which is the new name for Code Interpreter. Let's see if it can go and look at my uh, favorite website, Hacker News, okay? So here's Hacker News. It's just a very simple website. We've got some uh, new things happening, you know, I, I, uh, Mac OS 14. Let's say, hey, can you um, go to Hacker News? That is uh, this URL and see what's trending. All right, cool. So let's see how it does. Oh no, it can't browse the web. Well, that's a really common um, thing to do in, in Python. You can uh, you fetch data from the web, but Code Interpreter is in a Python sandbox environment and it looks like it has some kind of uh, firewall or something that disallows it from doing that. Um, let's see what Open Interpreter does. All right, let's see how Interpreter does. So I'm just gonna get the URL. Um, let's go to Hacker News and um, see what the top posts look. Top post. Um, actually, I realized to make it quicker, I can read it from um, Firebase. So let's say, go ahead and use Firebase com slash v0 slash top stories so that way you can read the JSON so now it's going to go to that website and it's going to get the JSON
cool. That sounds good. It's got a bunch of IDs. Okay, I want to get the top story, and then it's going to get the JSON for the top story. Cool, so it looks like bugging macOS 14 uh, Sonoma prevents our app from working. So that is the top story as we saw earlier. Has uh, um, 160 comments. So let's see, that looks right. Well, actually, maybe I need to reload my page. Maybe it's more up to date than mine. 160, okay, there we go. So yeah, it was able to go to this website and get a sense of what the top story is. Well, there you have it. There's the one capability that uh, Code Interpreter is missing, which Open Interpreter has. Well, there you go. Now you've seen how Open Interpreter stacks up against the original. It can do most of what we saw with the original and one more thing, which is browse the web. I'm super excited about the possibility of using the web more with this type of code interpreter environment. I think that it opens up a lot of abilities. Um, so, you know, I hope that you will go on and try to hack around with Open Interpreter yourself, play around, see what you can do, share any um, inter interesting things you build in the comments. And um, yeah, I uh, appreciate if you um, like and subscribe if you've uh, gotten anything out of this video. Thank you.